Hi, Peter Salemi, and welcome to the Watchman program. Well, as the Passover season is coming upon us, I want to talk to you on today's broadcast about a ritual that receives very little recognition in Christian circles. And that ritual is the cutting and the waving of the wave sheaf. Now, the wave sheaf is pretty much an armload of beautiful grain that's waved before God as an offering of the first fruits of the harvest. And that happens on a Sunday morning around 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning. But when is the wave sheaf cut? And what does it symbolize? And it, does it have anything to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Well, it has everything to do pretty much with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have you ever wondered why Jesus Christ told Mary in John the 20th chapter, verse 17, touch me not for I have not yet ascended to my father? He said that because it has everything to do with the wave sheaf offering. Now, before I get on with this subject, I want to offer you this free booklet, this free booklet called Jesus Christ's Resurrection on the Sabbath Day, free of charge off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. And there is a section in that booklet that talks about the wave sheaf offering, when it was cut, how it was prepared, and what it's got to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take a look at this, and I'll be right back. Well, life's been pretty good. Summer home, yacht, vacation when I wanted. <laughs> Some little kids sure spent a lot of time with that. Too bad they never last. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. The kids are grown now, and hmm, Sammy and I aren't getting any younger. Hmm, is this all there is? You can know the answer to this age-old question. What is the purpose of human life? Download your free copy at BritishIsrael.ca or call or text for a free hard copy at 905-447-4415 or 416-898-7700. After the Passover took place, then came the preparation of the wave sheaf offering. And there were several steps that took place before the offering was waved before God. And these steps were, and I'm going to read to you from the, the Mishnah, the, the old Jewish uh, texts that talk about the steps that they took to prepare the wave sheaf offering. In the Mishnah, rather, it says here, first, it was chosen very carefully. It wasn't randomly chosen. It was chosen very carefully, and they would pick the, the best quality fruits for the offering. Then, after, it was bound. And it says here from the Mishnah, it says, how uh, was it done? The messengers of the court went out and bound the, stand, the standing grain into sheaves so that it would be easy for cutting. So they would bound it up with ropes, and then it says, they would parge it with fire. They used to beat it with reeds and the stems of the plants that the grains should not be crushed. And then, so this preparation, this was the preparation for the wave sheaf offering. And then they would cut it. Now, when was this wave sheaf offering cut? Well, notice what it says here. When you look at Leviticus 23rd chapter, it says this. Let me just turn to it in the Bible. It says, and ye, Leviticus 23, 15, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, that's the weekly Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So after the weekly Sabbath, they would wave the offering before God. Now that was the waving, but not the cutting. When did the cutting take place? So it's all prepared, and then it was cut. And this took place, and let me just read to you from the Jewish texts here. This is from the Mishnah. It says here that the sickle was put to the grain just as the sun was going down on the weekly Sabbath. The waving took place the morrow after the weekly Sabbath, but the cutting took place, the cutting took place at the going down of the sun on the weekly Sabbath. And uh, Edersheim says the same thing in his book. Uh, temple, the temple, its uh, ministry and services. It says here that the temple priests reap the first fruits, fruits sheaf at the going down, at the going out 
of the Sabbath. So as the Sabbath was coming to an end, near sundown on the Sabbath day, they would cut the first of the first fruits of the harvest after they prepared it all, and then they would save it. They would save it till, as the forerunner's commentary says here, the sheaf was offered, meaning waved, before God the following morning, or more precisely, between 9 a.m. and noon. And they would take that grain in a wave sheaf, and they would lift it before God, and it was an offering of the first fruits of the harvest, and then it was brought back down to earth. So this is what happened after the Passover, the first, during the, after the Passover, on the first weekly Sabbath at sundown, they would prepare it, and then at sundown on the weekly Sabbath, they would cut the wave sheaf, keep it till 9 a.m. the next morning, wave it before God, lift it up to heaven before God as the offering, and then it was brought back down to earth. This is the ritual of the wave sheaf offering. Now, what does this have to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Well, when I come back, we'll go through some of the symbolism to show you that it has everything to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that troubled him, and Daniel the prophet came to explain what that dream meant. At first he saw a head of gold, and that was the Chaldean Empire, his empire. After that came the arms of silver, and that was the Persian Empire. After that empire came the torso of brass, and that was the Greco-Macedonian Empire. And after that empire came the two legs of iron, and that was the Roman Empire. After this came the part potter's clay and part iron, which is NATO and the EU in our modern day. And then the iron mixed with miry clay. That is the last resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire that will fight Christ at his coming. For more details, log on to our website at britishisrael.ca and download your free booklet, Who, What is the Beast of Revelation? Free of charge off our website, britishisrael.ca. As the wave sheaf was prepared and cut, it was not to be touched. This offering was holy, and God only allowed the high priest to touch that holy offering because it needed to be waved before the Lord. But it was not to be touched. Then after it was offered, then the priest could partake in the offering. As it says here in Jeremiah 2, verse 3, it's all in symbolism, but it's talking about the first fruits. It says, Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase. So the first fruits were holy. And when they were not to be touched, as it says here in Leviticus 23, 14, it says, And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor uh, green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. So it was holy and not to be touched until it was offered. As it says here in Matthew uh, Poole's commentary, this says this is done for good reason. God should be first served and owned as the supreme landlord. Then after it was offered, then the priest could partake in the offering. So it was holy and not to be touched until it was offered. What does this have to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Well, the first of the first fruits of the harvest has everything to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you notice here in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 20, it says this, But now is Christ risen from the dead. Talking about the resurrection. This is the resurrection chapter. Here talking about the resurrection of Christ. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Jesus Christ is the first fruits of the harvest. And if you read Luke, the 10th chapter, verse 2, the harvest is the harvest of people. Verse 23 of that same chapter. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, again, talking about the resurrection, every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ, that are, those are Christians, people that belong to Christ, people that have the Holy Spirit in them, they that are Christ at his coming, at the second coming of Jesus Christ, that's when the resurrection happens. So Christ is the first fruits of the harvest. Now, do we see in the Bible, as I went through with you, how the wave sheaf was uh, prepared and cut, do we find evidence in the Bible that Jesus was prepared and cut in the same way? Well, notice, it says here 
that Jesus was chosen by the leaders and high priests of Israel to be the offering for the nation. You can read that in John 11, 49-52. It says he was chosen by the people as the chosen Messiah in his triumphal entry into, into Jerusalem. Mark the 11th chapter, verse 7 through 10. And remember, the first of the first fruits was carefully chosen by the leaders, by the people. Here we see Christ being chosen by the leaders, by the people. It says Jesus was, of course, without sin and had the fruits of righteousness, the best fruits you can possibly have. You can read that in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 15, Philippians 1, 11. The fruits of righteousness. He was without sin, so he was the chosen, the best of the fruits chosen for the offering. And it says here, Christ was bound and taken to Pilate, Matthew 27, chapter verse 2. Jesus says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, his trials that he went through, his passion. And of course, the wave sheaf was parched with fire. You can read that in Revelation 3.18 and Isaiah the 53rd chapter. Then it says that Jesus was scourged and beaten, just like the wave sheaf offering that I read to you in the last segment. And you can read that in John 19.1, Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Then it says here that Jesus was not crushed. Why? Because not a bone of him was to be broken. Because if his uh, bones were broken, then the, that would render the sacrifice unclean. And so, was Jesus prepared just like the wave sheaf offering? Absolutely. Because he is the first of the first fruits of the harvest. Now, the preparing took place after the Passover, and the cutting took place the first weekly Sabbath after the Passover. And of course, the cutting represented the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When was Jesus Christ resurrected? Now, I did a separate video on this that you can find on our YouTube channel on Christ's resurrect resurrection when it actually took place. And we show you that the death of Christ took place on a Wednesday, and he died around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He was buried around 4. Then three days and three nights later, as Jesus Christ said, he was resurrected. And that took place on the weekly Sabbath. Around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus resurrected. And we proved that to you in that video if you want to check that out on our YouTube channel. Maybe we'll put the link underneath the YouTube window so you can go directly to that video if you want, if you want to watch it. But do we... Do we find evidence in the Gospels that when the wave sheaf was cut is the exact same time when Jesus was resurrected? Absolutely. We find it in Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 1. Notice what it says here. It says, in the end of the Sabbath. Now, literal translations have late on the Sabbath. So it was late on the Sabbath. And when, when does the end of the Sabbath take place? Well, the Bible plainly says, you shall count your Sabbaths from even to even meaning sunset to sunset. So this is sunset on the Sabbath, the Sabbath afternoon. Where they came, it says, as it began, began to dawn toward the first day of the week. So here we are at sunset, the end of the Sabbath. Mary comes to the sepulcher, and she sees that the stone's been rolled away. And then an angel says to her, verse 6, notice this, verse 6, it says this. He says, he, meaning Jesus, is not here. For he is risen, past tense. And this is near the end of the Sabbath. Jesus was gone already. When did he resurrect? Four o'clock in the afternoon, that Sabbath afternoon, not a Sunday morning. And that is when the wave sheaf offering, the first of the first fruits, was cut. And then it was left till that Sunday morning where it was waved before God and the high priest would lift it up towards heaven and wave it before God, and then it was brought back down to earth. So the resurrection took place, as the Gospels say, at the same time as the wave sheaf offering. At the end of the Sabbath, he, the first fruits was cut off. Jesus Christ was cut off from the land of the living as the wave sheaf was cut off from the harvest. And it was, it was left and it was waved around 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, why does Jesus say to Mary at this time in John the 20th chapter, verse 17, notice what he says to her. He says, Jesus said unto her, that's Mary, touch me not, 
for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Why would he say that to her? Well, because this is at the end of the Sabbath, and Jesus wasn't offered to the Father yet. That took place the next morning around 9 a.m. And remember, the, the uh, wave sheaf offering was not to be touched. It was holy. Afterward, after the waving, then they could partake in the offering. So he said, touch me not. I have not yet ascended to my Father. And then it says, go, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father. When does that take place? Well, the Sunday morning, 9 a.m. And say unto them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Then he ascended up to heaven and he was offered to God the Father as the first of the first fruits of the harvest. Then it says that self same day he came back down and you read the rest of the chapter and the disciples handled him and touched him. They could touch him because he was already offered to God the Father as the first of the first fruits of the harvest. So this wave sheaf offering has everything to do with Jesus Christ as he is presented as the first of the first fruits of the harvest. I urge you to get this booklet, Christ's Resurrection on the Sabbath Day, free of charge, off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends, and I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.